Hey everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today I am here to do one of the most requested videos that I ever get. Today we are going to dye yarn with beets. Beets are a fugitive dye, which means that you, while we might get some really, really cool color, it will fade over time. Um, I'm not sure if it's just a compound degrading issue or what, but it isn't as permanent as, say, um, maybe onions or indigo or some other natural dyes that we might play with. I have played with vegetable dyes that contain beet powder, and so I know and I expect that we will get some really, really cool pink colors on our yarn. But in addition to the traditional beets, I have which I think are some golden beets. I'm not, I haven't cut them open yet, so I don't really know the color. And I'm gonna dye six different fiber types. Uh, we've got 100% Peruvian Highland wool, 100% Superwash Merino, a sock yarn that is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% nylon, 100% polyester, 100% cotton, and 100% acrylic. And so we'll be able to see how all of these different yarn bases pick up some color. My hypothesis is that we're gonna see the most color absorption in our superwash yarn, and we'll see the least in sort of the cotton and synthetics. Um, but you never know. <laughs> I'm gonna be filming this video with no mordants, um, similarly to how I've done a lot of other natural dyes, sort of a first look, just to see how much color can we get if we just try to dye some yarn with some beets. I haven't decided yet if I'll be adding acid, but we'll see as this continues. I just sliced into one of the yellow beets, which I've never cooked before, and whoa, is that pretty. There's definitely some color from those yellow beets. I haven't cut up beets in a while, and my hand is a tiny bit stained, but I'm really, really excited to see where this goes and have a really nice beet salad for lunch. I'm gonna go ahead and cover the beets with water and bring it to a boil for about an 45 minutes to an hour. I will let the bigger pieces go for a bit longer probably than the golden ones. I will start the timer once I start to see a low simmer in each of the pots, but I wanted to give you a sense of the water level and that from just adding the water on, we already saw some color in the pots. I'm not doing anything differently than I would if I was just gonna boil some beets for a salad. I am pre-soaking all of the yarn in plain tap water while our beets boil. All right, it's been 45 minutes. I am going to turn off the yellow beets. Let's take a look at, I've got a nice golden yellow color. I'm just gonna check. Um, they do feel fairly soft. Um, yeah, I think those are probably pretty fine. Let's check in on the red ones who are also feeling pretty soft, but there's a lot more of them. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this go for 15 more minutes. And I'm gonna use a slotted spoon to remove the yellow beets, set them aside, de-skin them, so I can have them for lunch later. All right, it has been an hour. I am going to turn off the burner and remove these beets with a slotted spoon. And then we'll get ready to dye our yarn. All right, the heat is currently off, and I am gonna add the pre-soaked mini skeins directly to it, and whoa, check out that red from the beets. I am definitely gonna need to add water to both of these containers, so that way we can try to dye the yarn. I wanna add a full skein of yarn into the red, so I'm gonna go get a bit more water. I just added two cups of water to the yellow beet. I'm gonna add about four to the red, which yes, does dilute it, but we still have a lot of color in there, and I think that this should help uh, me, give me space to add the full skein, which I am going to do right now. One of the reasons why um, I like to do this 100% non-superwash wool it's because this is the yarn base I've done with a lot of these other natural dyeing projects so far. And so for consistency, uh, I really want to keep playing with that. Even though I know that the superwash yarns will sort of absorb 
more of the color. I do want to go ahead and add two more cups of water to here, but I am going to start turning on the heat and we're going to get started. There's the two more cups, which also shows um, how little color, you know, absorbs immediately, immediately. Um, but we do have like a nice, beautiful red color, even with it diluted. So again, I'm heating this and I'll come back in about 45 minutes to take a look. After around 15 minutes or so, the color that I saw on the red beets did change. It's still red, but it is definitely way more orange. Um, if you remember when we put in, it was definitely like a bright, bright, bright red. Um, I feel like everything in here is a little bit mixed up. So I'm not like necessarily saying like, oh, oh, here is a super lush yarn. Um, it's looking a little brownish, not so much pink, um, but we'll carry on and see what happens. The 45 minutes are up and this is honestly starting to look a little bit like yellow onion to me um, versus sort of what I expected. I'm going to go ahead. Ooh, that's a pretty yellow. I'm going to add some vinegar. I'm adding two tablespoons to the red and just one to the yellow because they do have different um, concentrate, like different water levels. But I've certainly used vinegar with some natural dye powders in the past. And I believe that the McCormick's Color from Nature colors are, the pink was made out of beet powder or maybe beet juice, I'm not sure exactly, but it was made out of beets. And that definitely gave us a bright pink on the yarn that stayed and is still present on the one skein I have in my possession. So I am curious. I'm curious to see what's gonna happen, how this is gonna proceed. And I'm also curious if this is something that's a little bit more like the black bean situation, where maybe if I hadn't heated it, I could have ended up sort of maintaining that color, but the heat could be degrading um, some of the molecules. But either way, I'm gonna let this go for an hour and then I'll come back and check in, but I am gonna reduce the heat to low. An hour has passed after I added the vinegar and I just turned off the heat. There's definitely still a lot of color. I'm not expecting it to exhaust or anything, but we did see color exhaust uh, with the yellow onion, so it's worth checking. And even in here, that we do still have some of the yellows. Now, yeah, I think that we probably have a tiny bit of maybe staining, although one of the, so the synthetics still look actually pretty white here. The water level is super, super low. I'm gonna let this cool off in the pot. Maybe more color will absorb. I see a hint of a difference between where I can see the superwash yarn and the non, but I mean this is definitely sort of like a warm orangish brown versus a pink. But the color didn't shift from the addition of vinegar, the color did shift I think from just the, the heat. Um, and probably because since the beets were removed there wasn't the continual I guess addition of more pigment coming out of the, out of the beets. So, yeah, I am curious what would happen if I hadn't heated it, but in either way, we're gonna let this cool off and then I'll be back when we're ready to wash the yarn. 36 hours later, let's start off by washing the yarn with the yellow beets. Um, I'm not gonna sort of analyze the different colors so far. We are seeing some color bleeding in here. I really only threw these yellow beets into this video because I saw them at the supermarket and I was like, oh, may as well try both at the same time. So I just added some clear dish soap um, and I have a feeling I'm going to want to do a fair amount of rinsing. The amount of bleeding is not horrible and there's definitely, definitely some color in there. There's also still some pigment in the original water, but yeah, it doesn't look bad at all. So I'll rinse it 
a bit more. Probably do soap again because beets are starchy. But then we'll come back and wash the red beet dye yarn. Now let's wash our red beet dyed yarn. So we have this very warm yellowish orange color. Very, very surprising to me. Um, and you can see that that runoff does look rather pink. But it is, it, it was really interesting to see the colors change as, uh, as it was simmering because it was a lot redder at the start. But again, you know, who knows? It, clearly something was degrading from the heat. I've seen pinks from what I all had assumed with beet juice in the past, so I'm not quite sure what it was this time, but certainly I could play around with this again. And unlike the yellow beets, it's looking like I'm seeing a difference uh, between some of the superwash and non-superwash here, but I'm going to wash this just like I did the other one. I'm going to add, add some clear dish soap. And, you know, the water is already significantly clearer. There's still some color coming out, but I'll keep washing it until it runs clear. I realize now that things are dry that I made a mistake with this video. And the mistake I made was that I accidentally had too many skeins of our DK Superwash yarn with the yellow beets and too many skeins of the 100% Peruvian Highland wool non-superwash yarn in with the red beets. And so therefore we're missing a data point of um, the 100% Peruvian Highland wool here and the 100% superwash merino up there with the red beets versus the yellow beets. In both cases, the wools absorbed the most amount of color. With the red beets, I see a little bit of staining on the 100% cotton, a little bit of staining on the polyester, not so much on the acrylic. And with the yellow beets, the cotton and synthetics stayed pretty much unstained. The color from the yellow beets over here reminds me a lot of the color we got from rhubarb leaves. It's sort of a dirty yellow, maybe the slightest hint of green in there. The color that we got from the red beets is kind of an orangish brown. The Stroll Superwash um, Sock Yarn, which is a Superwash Merino Nylon Blend, is definitely a warm brown but that one looks orange. I do think that heating the beet extract changed the color um, and that potentially if we were to do this with, if we were to extract the color and then add the yarn and sort of didn't continue heating things, maybe we would have gotten more pinks. I mean, I've seen pinks from beet powder before, so I'm not 100% sure why the color changed it certainly didn't seem to be from the vinegar because it sort of shifted before then. But this is all a learning process and I would be willing to explore this more in the future. As for the full skein of yarn, we have a lot of color in there. This is fairly pigmented. So I have to say, I'm impressed. Now, beads are supposed to be a fugitive dye, which is a term that's applied when the color isn't really that long lasting. And I'm not sure if the fugitive quality is on the pink, <laughs> which we don't have, or if we would expect these pigments to fade over time. Um, either way, it's something to sort of keep in mind if you are planning to use this as a dye. Um, that, and this is something that I always disclose, say, when I'm listing something in my shop, um, just because I think it's important to know. We had this in the heat for a long time. Um, I still see, you know, the integrity of the twist and everything is still pretty good. It is, it's not felted, but maybe the slightest bit of being stuck together. I know that I would have no trouble reskeining this on my automated skein winder. And for something like this, I probably would reskein it. 
Is this a solid? That's hard to say. If it's a solid or a semi-solid, if we would see some tonal variation to it. When a dye absorbs really slowly to the yarn, you are more likely to get something that's a true solid versus seeing some subtle differences in tone around the yarn. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and as always, feel free to let me know what I did wrong in the comments below. If I did, well, really I didn't do something wrong. I went about this in the way that I go about a lot of natural dyeing, and there might be other ways to get other results. Um, I would say that the color is kind of similar to yellow onion skins, and so I might go and choose to do that instead of the beets in the future, but I, I am pretty excited by having this, this, these colors come out. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, and give the video a like if you thought that it was worthwhile for me to have done this. If you would like to influence the content on a more direct level that I do here on the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel, you should check out the Chemnitz Patreon. Patrons get to vote in a poll every month that really shapes the Dye Pop PS series, but the runners up from these polls uh, make it into the Dye Pop Weekly series sooner rather than later. And so it's a really kind of cool way to help me pick the different things off of my list to focus on and to film. You can find links in the video description and iCard. Thank you so much for watching!